This video series is going to replicate the steps used in a previous video series for APEX 18.1. The scenario is the same, a database and web application for an animal shelter. In this particular series, I will have Oracle XE 11.2 Apex 19.1, which is why I'm doing this new series, and SQL Developer 19.1. If you want to work along with the series, you can go to this website and download the scripts for the 18.1 series. I will follow the same steps other than making adjustments for Apex 19.1. In this video, we will first log in to Oracle Apex and look under SQL Workshop at Object Browser and take a quick look at sequences and triggers and the coding specifically in triggers. Then we will use the SQL Scripts component of SQL Workshop to upload and run scripts that are going to put data into the tables we created in the previous video. We will take a look at the data model before we run the scripts to see what is the order in which data should be added to the tables. There is a specific order. Then we will use the utilities feature in Apex Utilities and then under that Data Workshop to see how you could import data into a table from an external text file. So I'm going to log in to Oracle Apex as a developer. So I have filled in the workspace, developer name and password, and I'm logging in to Apex 19.1. I'm going to go to SQL Workshop and go to Object Browser. Take a look at Sequences. And we see a list of sequences. Let's pick one. And this doesn't tell us a whole lot other than we do have a sequence created. And I'm using a naming convention for the field that the sequence is used with, followed by underscore SEQ. So animal underscore ID underscore SEQ. I can look at the actual SQL command that created this. And this was in the create table script that we used in the last video. So I've created a sequence and I've said what to increment by one in this case and in most cases and what value to start with. When we bring the data in now, I will have assigned the actual primary key value for each record that we import because I want to make sure that you and I have the same numbers. But once we have run those insert statements, then when we add more data, this sequence will kick in and will provide the value that goes in the next record when something is added to a table, such as the employee table. The other thing that you need to do this is triggers. Triggers are a little bit of PLSQL code, a little program that runs. And let's go, I'll go to employees, for example. And I'll go to the code itself. And we can take a look at this very briefly. This coding runs before I insert a record. It's got a BI naming convention, BI, before insert. It doesn't have to have those letters in, at the beginning, but it's a standard way of naming a trigger. So BI employees. This code will look to see if there is an employee ID, which there is in my script. So if the employee ID is there, then this code is skipped over. I will say briefly that you do not have to use sequences and triggers. You can use a data type called identity when you create a column in a table if you want it to serve as the primary key field. But I'm not using that. I want to break this down so that we can look at what's happening at the database level and 
consider what's happening with our sequences and our triggers when we insert data into a table. In older versions of Oracle, we always use the sequence and the trigger, but that hasn't been the case for some while now. So under SQL Workshop, I'm going to SQL Scripts. So I will select Choose File. I'm going to upload several files. I'll start with zip, but I'll also upload transactions, persons, employees, and animals. But taking zip first, I'll upload that, and I see that that file has been uploaded. I'm now going to pause the video while I upload the other files. Before we run the scripts, I want to talk just briefly about the order in which data should be added to the tables. This is based on relational database concepts. So you can look at videos I created for the APEX 18.1 series to get a more detailed explanation. Basically, we see these relationships between tables. And this single line that ends in three lines is what we call a one-to-many relationship. We want to find tables that are only on the one side of a relationship, only on the one side. So we know we have zips. That would be populated with data first. Data would go in that table first. Once we've done that, then we can populate data or bring data into persons. Once we've done persons, we have a one-to-many relationship to employees. Then we can add data to employees. So the many side gets the data after the one side gets the data. So I'm going to add data to zips, persons, employees, animals, then transactions. Transactions will be last. So let's do one. I will click on Run to insert data for the zips table, zip codes, and Run Now. And scroll down and make sure I see zero errors. Then I can go back to my scripts and proceed through the tables. So I'm going to do persons, then employees, then animals, and then transactions. I will pause the video while I do that. So I've run everything except transactions. The results we see here. So you could click on this and go to the results screen. If you didn't do this, I do it automatically when I run the script and make sure that I get the zero errors. Now I'm going to run transactions because I expect an error. So I'll run that and I'll scroll down and I see two errors. So there are 69 commands in this file. I'm going to advance to the end and I planned on this error here. What we see here is I tried to add an animal or excuse me, I tried to add a transaction record for an animal ID that does not exist. You have to have an animal before you can have a transaction. So there's an error in the code. It's called an integrity constraint, and it's because the parent key, the animal ID and animal table, could not be found. I planned that error. I have another error, which I didn't plan on, which is simply a typo. I have a commit command, and I put a colon, but it should have been a semicolon. That's what generated this error. Neither one of these will keep us from moving forward. The one other thing I'll do is come back here and try to run one of these again. So I'm going to do the employees table. It's already run once without errors. Try to run it again. And I see that I have 26 errors. This is actually a very good thing. I've already added the employee records and they have a primary key value. The database rules keep me from adding another record for the same employee ID. So sometimes getting an error is a good thing. The database management system, the DBMS, is helping you out. Let's go to SQL Workshop Object Browser 
and look at any of these tables. Let's look at activities. Oh wait, that's the one we didn't add data to. Click on the data tab and we see that we have data. Click on persons. We see we have data. So the data has come in. The last thing that we'll do is go to SQL Workshop and go to Utilities, Data Workshop. So we're going to load data. I'm going to upload a file, choose a file, and it's going to be the activities data file. It's a comma separated values file, CSV. So I've run into the first major difference between Apex 19.1 and previous versions. Typically I was expecting to see an option to import into an existing table here, but it is not on this screen, it's on the previous screen. So what I need to do is choose a file. Actually, hang on, I might need to go back to the screen before that, and I do. I need this, load to existing table. So this is giving me the option to, to import data into an existing table. So I'll click that and upload a comma delimited file. And I will select the table, activities. So this is giving me the dialog that I always saw in previous versions of Apex. I will select the data file and I'm getting a preview of that data. Each column separated by a comma that's detected by Apex and that is correct. So I'll click Next. Then I can select the column name that corresponds with the data in a row in that text file. The first one is the activity ID. The second one is the animal ID. Then the activity date. Then we have the main category, such as medical or grooming. And within that, we have a subcategory. I have a description or comment column. Then I have who processed this, the purse ID. And I can then click load data. I can go to SQL Workshop, go to Object Browser and Activities, click the Data tab, and I'll see that the data came in. I want to come back briefly and go to the Utilities and Data Workshop. I'm not going to actually import the data because we've already done that. I do want to say that this change that I see here, the Apex 19.1, where it forces you to add data to a new table, is really the best way to go. When I was teaching data migration, I would talk about not importing directly to the target table because that allows you the ability to capture errors, as we see here, the error table name, so we can identify errors before we actually add the data to the target table. So I'm not using that feature here because I've built this video series assuming we could import directly to a table. But I do like what they've done with the new interface. We have a database with data in the tables. We'll begin creating our application.